In the summer of 1935, Adolf Hitler decided to issue a very important order to the Abwehr, the German Secret Service. He was still hoping to work an alliance out with Great Britain, and he forbade employing Nazi agents in the UK. Hitler's orders came too late. By that time, Admiral Canaris, who became the new head of Abwehr on the 1st of January 1935, already had a spy on British soil. After taking over the new role, Wilhelm Canaris energetically started to work, and under his command, the Abwehr started to become more and more effective. He restructured the German Secret Service, employed hundreds of personnel, and ordered laboratories to work on portable devices for secret agents. Canaris's continuous work brought amazing effects after just eight months. German agents started to appear all over Europe. The majority of them were inexperienced and the French authorities themselves managed to catch 21 German spies within the first 10 months. Although the first actions of the new Abwehr were hardly professional, Wilhelm Canaris had sent an important message. His secret service was to become one of the major players in the spy game over the next few years. On August 29, 1935, Hermann Gortz presented his passport to the British Immigration Service. He was not trying to hide his identity, and he was traveling under his real name. Everything he told the officer was true. Everything, except the true reason behind his trip. His name wasn't on a blacklist, and the immigration inspector saw no reason to deny entry to Mr. Gortz. After going through the official border formalities, he became the first major German spy in Great Britain since World War I. His mission originated in the Luftwaffe headquarters, and it was Hermann Göring himself ordering this secret agent to the UK. For a long time, he was receiving mixed reports of RAF strength. While some claimed that Britain was developing a large fleet of strategic bombers able to target Germany, the others were claiming the exact opposite, arguing the RAF had been concentrating on defense made up mainly of fighters and fighter bombers. It was difficult to resolve who was right. Goring decided that the best way to verify the claims was to send a secret agent to collect the data. Dr. Gortz was a World War I aircraftman, also a member of the Black Luftwaffe. It had been decided he was the right man to go, and Admiral Canaris decided to sign him into the Abwehr. It was a perfect situation for him, as he could pass all the responsibility for this mission to the Luftwaffe High Command and Hermann Göring, the second most important person in Nazi Germany. Canaris was satisfied with Gortz, and the mission received the okay to proceed. Gortz made a very good impression on Canaris with his elegance and manners. He was a man of many talents. He was not only an aviator, but he also served as an interrogator of Allied pilots shot down during World War I. After the war, he became a lawyer, frequently traveling to Great Britain as a representative of the Siemens Corporation. He was described as an early version of James Bond, mainly because of his masculine charm, physical fitness, and bespoke manners. It is easy to understand why Wilhelm Canaris believed he was the perfect man for the mission, but there were facts Admiral Canaris didn't realize, or rather, did not want to see. Although Gortz had an exceptional talent for mathematics and topography, he was also described as a romantic spirit, with problems in his private as well as professional life. Despite this, it had been decided he was a good candidate and he joined Canaris' network. After arriving into the United Kingdom, Gortz very quickly started his mission in Milden Hall, a place chosen because of the RAF installations. He was traveling with Marianne Emig, claiming she was his secretary. Mrs. Florence Johnson, whom they rented a bungalow from, was uneasy about the presence of a married man with a young, 19-year-old blonde girl. Hermann Gortz finally managed to convince her, and the landlady agreed to the let. They started their research the day after their arrival. The following days, Gortz was busy preparing detailed sketches of nearby airfields and RAF installations, while Marianne Emig was trying to use her beauty and charm to seduce young airmen, succeeding with Kenneth Lewis. She also acted a lookout for Gortz, 
when they were traveling to various places. Although her partner was confident enough and felt secure, Marianne wasn't entirely convinced and sensed that something might be wrong. The main clue was the change in Kenneth Lewis's behavior as he started to be more interested in Marianne's activities than in herself. His instinct told him that there was something suspicious about this foreign pair. Although he had been a frequent guest to their home and enjoyed the late drinks at the Havelock bungalow, he decided to make a full report to his commander. It had been decided to take things even further, and the full report was submitted to the MI5, the British Counterintelligence and Security Agency. Colonel Hinchley Cook had been dispatched to investigate the case. From now on, the German pair were kept under constant surveillance, being followed by three inspectors from the Kent County Constabulary. Gortz had been seen taking photos and making sketches of various airfields. Over a month after their arrival, they realized they might have been observed, and Marianne insisted on stopping their missions and going back to Germany. Gortz didn't share her pessimism, but thought that they had enough data and that he could escort her back to Hamburg. They were praised in Germany for all the data collected, but back in England, their situation had changed dramatically. The suspicious landlady had contacted the local authorities and informed them about the strange German pair. Gortz had made a mistake and left all his agent's equipment in a suitcase in the bungalow. When Colonel Cook arrived at the Havelock, he opened the luggage, finding inside the proof he needed. A special camera, diary, filled with detailed information, and a lot of sketches. When Gortz came back to England, this time on his own, he was taken into custody. Initially, the British thought of him as just an overkeen freelancer and were planning to deport him. Just before his trial ended, Hitler's army marched into Rhineland. At the same time, it had been discovered Gortz's application to join the appware and his cipher. Taking everything into account, the judge sentenced Hermann Gortz to four years in jail. Although the British were considering this case more curious and amusing than dangerous, the incident had made Hitler furious. Admiral Canaris blamed the Luftwaffe for the mission's failure and was trying to convince Hitler to let him send at least a few agents to England. The Fuhrer remained adamant and had issued another order. Absolutely no spies in the United Kingdom. Although Canaris was under pressure from the Kriegsmarine and the Luftwaffe, craving for the intelligence, he didn't dare disobey Hitler's will. He confirmed to him, he doesn't have any more secret agents in the UK. 